Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webcast, T-Mobile's Inventory Evolution Paper to Mobile. Cyclo would like to welcome customer T-Mobile as they tell of their mobile success story and their plans for the future. My name is Melody Englund, and I will be the host for today's webcast. There are just a couple of things that I want to go over before we get started. Um, just to let you know, all the phone lines will be muted to prevent background noise from interfering with the webcast. So if you wish to communicate with myself or the presenters, please feel free to use the Q&A box for all your questions. We will save your questions about the presentation for the end during our Q&A session. The duration of the webcast is expected to be approximately 45 minutes. And after the webcast, we will provide the link to the recording of today's presentation. Now I would like to introduce our presenters. First speaking is Senior Account Executive at Cyclo, Mary Sullivan. Mary works with our West Coast customers, and she has over 15 years' experience selling to enterprise customers. Joining us from T-Mobile, we are pleased to have Senior Manager of Software Development, Ashley Bartles. Ashley owns supply chain and enterprise mobile application development, supporting business users across the organization. With T-Mobile for six years, she has led diverse initiatives such as integrating third-party logistic facilities to the implementation of a mobile inventory solution in retail. And to conclude our webcast for today, Senior Business Consultant from Cyclo, Brian Nelson, will be demoing Cyclo's Smart Inventory Manager for our SAP. And now, without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Mary. Mary, take it away. Great. Thanks, Melody. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mary Sullivan, and I have a few slides here at the beginning that I'm just going to tell you uh, who Cyclo is, because I know there's some people on here who may not have had exposure to Cyclo in the past. Um, okay. We are a company that the corporate office is out of the Chicago area. It is a privately owned company, but as you've heard, SAP is acquiring Cyclo. We have a little shy of 200 individuals. We have over 600 customers in 39 different countries, and we have deployed our solution in multiple different languages. Mobile is all we do. Uh, we have been uh, tied to the hip with SAP since March of 2009, and our engineers have worked on the ground to the putting the products together to defining them, developing them, testing them, deploying them, and we can support multiple devices. We have pre-integrated solutions that work with both SAP's ERP system as well as IBM's Maximo and Tririga solution. So we are still in the quiet period, so there may come, come questions regarding our roadmap that we're not able to speak about today. But why did SAP acquire us? As you know, mobility is the key growth area for SAP. And what this does is it puts, gives SAP complex applications that it can extend out the use of their systems. Okay. So here's a representative sample of our products. If you look at the one in the upper right-hand corner, the work manager, what that does, <clears throat> it allows you to do preventive and predictive maintenance, corrective repair work, create work orders on the fly, view asset maintenance history, and this can also be integrated with SAP's CAT solution. The one to the right of that, the service manager, will allow you to manage service requests, route requests, record job steps, and you can view all the relevant customer data from equipment listings to entitlements to contract and service history. We also have the capability of doing trunk and truck stock, where you can view the availability of items, order needed material, and that way you can ensure timely replenishment. Inventory manager is the one that we're focusing on in today's presentation. At a high level, that allows you to do storeroom management, cycle counts, PO receiving, issues and returns, and transfers. Then we have the rounds application. That accelerates routine service data on the assets. It put, puts measurement points directly back into the SAP system. You can compare with historic standards and safe ranges, and you can gener generate notifications on the spot. We also have specific applications for the utility and the energy space. 
And then we have other complex applications like the sales manager, approval manager, sales and distribution. So what are the challenges that we've heard from our customers and our prospects as it relates to inventory? Definitely, I think the number one thing is inventory visibility. And they, they're either carrying too much inventory or not enough inventory. So there's material obsolescence. And that what our solution does is it gives management oversight to what's in the stock room. Okay. So what are some of the things, the other things that you can do with our inventory solution? Again, you can perform the physical counts. You can track material, issue, returns, and transfers goods electronically. We also have components that can be integrated in our inventory management solution. So if you want to integrate to a GIS system or you want to add in different um, image capture, or if you want to add in things like linking documents, you can do that as well. So what are the key requirements for success? I think the number one thing on how we market our solution is the configurability. Our solutions were pre-built and pre-integrated to work directly with SAP. They're very easy to learn. We definitely have a broad device support. We have over 140 different devices that have been tested with our applications. And we have a document that outlines those devices. So if you're thinking of going down a particular route, you can email us and we could send you a copy of that document. So configurability is probably the number one thing. This is a representative sample of just some of our customers that are using our smart inventory manager. And this product is a complete materials management solution, and it can link your stockroom and your warehouse and give you full visibility, whether you have remote employees and or customers. So what are the measurable business benefits that come out of this? Definitely improved productivity, 360 degree view of your operations, Definitely, we've seen cost reductions and asset longevity. And now, Ashley, I'll turn this over to you. Thanks, Mary. Let me just get to my slide. So as, uh, as Melody mentioned, um, I've been with T-Mobile for six years. I'm currently the software development manager for a couple of applications, and I've had uh, the unique privilege of being associated with our Cyclo implementation starting at the very beginning. Um, and through today, I'm actually, it's one of the applications that my team manages. Um, I'm going to go through just a few highlights about who is T-Mobile, what do we do, um, what was our initial mobile decision, and how did we get to where we are today. Our journey um, includes a lot of ups and downs, and it, um, I, I think anytime you're doing something that changes the way that your field employees do something so intrinsically that you're going to face a lot of hurdles, and um, I think my story really illustrates that in detail. Um, we'll talk some of, through some of the lessons learned as well as, as, well as some of the highlights um, and the benefits that we've achieved. And where we're really, some of the things we're looking at in the future and where we're going to take this next. So T-Mobile is headquartered in Bellevue, Washington. We are the U.S. subsidiary of Deutsche Telekom, and um, we have fourth quarter customer base of around 33 million customers in the United States and Puerto Rico. 2011, our sales and service revenues were 21 billion, and we have approximately 36,000 employees. You can go to tmobile.com and learn more about what we offer and learn all about our company. Today, T-Mobile operates 
2,500 corporate retail stores. And when we initially launched our mobile inventory project, we were around 2,000 locations across the U.S. Um, SAP is our financial system of record, so it's our back end. It does all of our inventory tracking, all of our receiving, purchasing, procurement. Um, our retail stores access SAP through a web front end, and they complete all of their non-sales, their traditional inventory management movements through that web front end, such as goods receipt, physical inventory, goods movements, stock transfer creation. Our mobile evolution started maybe a little bit later than you might think, um, considering we're a telecommunications company. Um, it, it, it's an it's a interesting story, and that's the one I'm going to share with you today. And our, our story starts back um, a while ago with a program called Connect with Retail, and this was around 2008. And, what Connect with Retail is, is an opportunity for our executives to participate in frontline activities within our retail stores. So they go and they um, sell to customers and they complete inventory transactions and they really get a good feel for what the um, pain points are that those um, individuals who are in our retail stores experience. And from for us as a um, organization that sells to the, to the consumer, it's important for our executives and for our field service organization to really support those people in what they do in day-to-day -day activities. And so that firsthand experience is really crucial. In 2008, um, we kind of do a, go back in our history books a little bit, 2008 was, um, we had just launched the first Android phone, which was the G1 in October, and our CIO was participating in his Connect with Retail experience. Um, he was at a retail store, and they were doing inventory that week. And he calls my boss at the time, um, and he goes, Allison, do you know how the stores do inventory? And she's like, well, yeah, I, I, I kind of understand how the stores do inventory. You know, we, we're an SAP shop. I get that. Um, well, he, this is what they do. They, they go into SAP, and they print out their physical inventory documents on a piece of paper. And then they put those on a clipboard, and they go around their store, and they mark off how many they have of each item. And then they come back to their back office, and then they enter that into SAP. And we did some quick calculations, and we we're figuring it's probably once a month, 2,000 stores doing this, probably takes two or three employees to do, and that's a lot of hours. And not only is it a lot of hours, um, we can only do it once a month because it does take so long to do. Um, the employees were extremely dissatisfied with the experience, right? It, it's not something they looked forward to. It wasn't what their really core competency was. Um, it resulted in a lot of inaccurate counts. They um, would trust what the system would say. They'd say, oh, you know, SAP says I have 18 of these, but, you know, I counted 17. The system must be right, so I'll put in 18. Um, the team, my, my team, was tasked um, with something that was very aggressive. We were asked by, by Rob, our CIO, he said, um, we want this fixed, and we want this to go to a mobile solution, and we want it done by the first of the year. Now, this was November, and if we do some quick calculations, that's about six weeks to get a mobile solution in. And we knew immediately that it wouldn't be in 2,000 stores in six weeks, but we could have something, and we felt pretty strongly that we would be successful in being able to deliver something to the retail stores where we could demonstrate the value of this as a mobile solution and maybe a handful of stores, maybe a dozen, right, or a couple right after the right after the new year. Um, but this there was a lot of things that we needed to cover. Um, we needed to make some decisions really rapidly on how we would do this and um, what our timelines would be. And with the end of the year and all the holidays, and um, 
there was a lot of things we needed to go through. So the first thing we did was we had to make a decision on um, what we would go with. Um, we called an implementation partner that we had dealt with before on some other initiatives. Um, we called Fiber and we said, had some really great discussions with them on what, you know, what do you recommend? What, what do you think the best options are? Should we build something? Should we go with something out of the box? Um, how should we approach this? And they had had a lot of work um, at a previous client with Cyclo, and they said, you know, this is really the direction you want to go. It's, it's already integrated with SAP, and that's going to eliminate the majority of the work you have to do. You're not going to get rid of SAP. You're going to have that. So let's, uh, let's take that as an assumption and go forward with, you know, SAP is going to be there. Figure out the best way to integrate to SAP. Um, we need something fast. We need something that's mobile and that's, that's really, um, really mature in the mobile space. And we, we didn't want something that would be awkward or would have a lot of issues right out of the gate. We're putting this in the hands of retail employees. We wanted it to be a really good experience for them. Um, and we, we also knew we had some flexible um, requirements. Um, when you're working in a retail environment as opposed to a warehouse environment, we needed to um, really highlight some of those retail-specific requirements that would affect us going forward. Um, not only the fact that it was a retail environment, but that it was 2,000 retail stores. I mean, that's a big number of people who would be using this. Um, and we didn't expect to stay at 2,000, we expected to grow. So not only did we have to be able to put it in at 2,000 stores, but then be able to scale up from there and be nimble enough to deploy it at other locations after we've asked, um, gotten it out of the box. So some of the things we talked about um, right away were, I, I kind of put them into three major categories. The first were the devices. You know, what kind of hardware would we use? What kind of software would we use? And we, we made that decision really quick on the software. It's like, Cyclo, that's the way we're going to go. But then we we're like, you know, hardware is an interesting question. We had just released the G1, and we all knew that you could take that and you could scan a barcode and it would return information about that barcode, like where you could buy it at a lower price at a nearby store. And we had actually quite a few conversations about would this be a direction we wanted to go, but when you start looking at some of the other technical hurdles that we'd have to overcome, such as, you know, would we go with Wi-Fi or wireless? Um, how would we manage the security? Because we were on such a rapid deployment, we needed to make sure that we had something really stable and really, really easy. I mean, the major goal here was to simplify things and not make it more complex. So we always kept coming back to that question is, is this going to make things easier for the stores or is this going to make it more difficult for them? Um, on a, pro a program management uh, perspective, we looked at, you know, what are the success criteria? How are we going to roll this out to all of these locations? What does the maintenance and support look like going forward? And then on the integration side, we knew we were integrating to SAP. We knew that um, this was a different environment than a warehouse. We didn't have bins and specific locations of inventory within the store. Um, back to that, is this making it easier question. Um, we didn't want to require inventory to be kept in a specific location in the store. You, if you think about a retail store, especially a, a telecommunications location, you're going to have um, handsets and inventory back in a cage. You're going to have some things, probably the same SKUs in the front of the store as well as the back of the store, and probably in multiple locations within the front of the store. So we needed it to be very flexible and an inventory process that would allow the user to scan and then move on to the next item regardless of where it was in the store, and even go back and forth between items. Excuse me. So we came up with a, a pretty aggressive timeline when Cyber came on board. Um, 
we had a two-week um, plan for the design and dev cycle. Um, we had a uh, plan to implement 10 stores by January to prove out the value of this and have them run for about three months. Um, doing inventory about once a month. Of course, um, whenever you put a plan into place, things happen. And December 2008 happened to be one of the worst um, snowstorms ever in the Seattle area history. And we were very heavily impacted by, by Mother Nature. We struggled to meet our December timelines. Um, we had a, very limited resources available to do our testing and really only one developer who had traveled here from the Atlanta area. She was staying in a hotel just behind the corporate offices. She was the only one that could actually make it into the office um, because she could walk here and she was the one that did all of our unit testing. Um, it really proved out how um, important it was to have a good working team that could communicate well over the phone. Um, we were successful against our project plan because we were able to work so closely and we were such a small team that we were able to um, fix bugs as soon as they happened and everybody was very invested and very committed to the success of the effort. One of the huge decisions we had was you know, how do we make a decision on where where this is going to pilot? Um, we knew that we wanted as many as possible in the Seattle area. It would just make it easy for us to go and troubleshoot if they were local. Um, but we also wanted to have as much exposure nationally across our retail organization as possible. So we ended up choosing seven in the Seattle area and then one each in Dallas, Chicago, and New York. Um, we uh, wanted to make sure that we had a really good first-hand understanding of the hurdles we could face rolling this out nationally. So we, we wanted to force ourselves to go nationally right away because that was, we knew we wouldn't be able to be on site every time we deployed one of these. We needed to eliminate those issues as soon as possible. And then our communication was also really critical. Um, we were very deliberate in how we communicated to the retail stores. This was right during the busy retail season. They were focused on getting their December numbers and we had to make this something that they wanted to be a part of. We used words like exciting and we called out a lot of the benefits. Um, and we, we wanted them to be as invested in the success of this as we were. Um, in the end, we feel that the rollout in you know, the end of 2008, 2009 was an extraordinarily successful rollout to those 10 stores. We hit our timelines. We hit those, um, those original timelines where we wanted the two stores by 1229. We got that. Um, and we were able to roll out to the eight additional stores in um, mid mid January. Unfortunately, um, we had some issues with our project funding. So, in um, the, another piece of this was during this entire project rollout, when we're doing the technical rollout, we're doing a concurrent financial analysis. What is our cost benefit going to be? What is our ROI? And um, after we looked at the complexity of the entire rollout, the hardware and other costs associated with the project, it ended up being a flat ROI. We weren't losing money, but it was flat. Um, the users loved the project. They loved the product and they were extraordinarily disappointed. But in the end of March 2009, we sent a communication out to all of our the pilot stores to send back their hardware. We worked with our infrastructure teams um, to shut down the servers. And as a project team, this was, it was extremely disheartened. Everyone who had been engaged saw the benefit and we, we knew there was more to the to this project than just the um, 
quantitative benefits, there was a lot of qualitative benefits. Um, we, uh, of course, um, even though we took all of our boxes and we put them under storage and we said, you know, it's going to be something that put in a lessons learned, you know, let's maybe do the ROI ahead of time next time. Um, we said, um, as a organization, that we're, we're a more mobile company and probably this would be something we'd, we'd want to look at in the future. Of course, um, we didn't know how soon in the future that would be, but it, if we fast forward just a few months, so that was maybe February of 2009, we fast forward a few months to um, November of 2009, um, we had just received a new operations um, off, chief oper operations officer, um, and he was participating in his Connect with Retail experience. And don't you know, I received the same phone call. It was like, it was very deja vu. Um, the same phone call, you know how we're doing inventory. And it was um, very interesting to go to him and say, yes, Jim, we know exactly how we're doing inventory. In fact, we solved this problem already. And we realized that there's a flat ROI. Um, and he said he, does, he didn't care. He thought that there was more to the benefits of this program than just the ROI. And he was convinced, as we were, of those benefits. So the qualitative benefits, the modernization platform that we could put into place, and the job satisfaction that we'd give to our retail employees. And the better experience and putting those hours back into serving our customer, um, in the end, was, was definitely a more important. So, um, obviously, wouldn't be talking to you today if things had halted in um, February 2009. But in uh, November 2009, we were had the opportunity to spin up a nearly identical pilot than that we had done a year ago. And we called Cyber again, and they came on board, and we spun up the um, the same servers and the same hardware. Um, but even though our hardware and our servers were the same, a lot had changed in in the you know eight months, eight to ten months um, since we shut down. And one of those things that changed was uh, upgrade from SAP 4.7 to ECC 6.0. Um, we had also added a new type of retail environment into our ecosystem, so we had dealer partners as well as our organic or internal T-Mobile stores. Um, and the business had time to sit down and think about um, things like, well, what else could these, this project do? You know, what, other, what other items could we have um, within the, the scope of this project? And you know, anytime your business users sit down and, and get to thinking, then we get a bit bigger BRD and larger scope. Um, we had um, a lot better and a lot more time to analyze some of those logistical issues of rolling out 2,000 locations and how can we support that many people um, and how can we really um, ensure that it's a, a really consistent experience across the organization. And the, one, the way that we were able to solve that was through the added functionality that Cyclo provided of the mobile device manager, or MDM. MDM was so critical for us. Um, we did not want to have to have individuals regionally who were trained to support this. We needed to be able to have the um, our centralized support organization um, be able to troubleshoot remotely. So we needed to, can we remote control this device? We needed to be able to um, set these devices up at a single location and send them pre-configured to each store. Um, this had to be very plug and play for our retail stores. Um, literally open the box and plug it into the wall and then it would work for them and there would have to be no additional configuration done. 
Um, and we also wanted to allow for our business users and for our application support team to direct the deployment of new devices when we opened new stores. We didn't want to have development engaged each and every time you opened a new location. That had to be a very seamless activity and very easily inserted into the operational processes. So the end of 2009 and throughout 2010 were a very, very busy year when it came to Cyclo implementation. Um, as I said, we immediately unboxed all of our scanners. We spun up the server. Um, we configured it for some minor changes to the connections that we needed into the new SAP version. Um, we, we had that 10 store pilot to prove out um, that all of our connections still worked for the physical inventory management. And we added 41 additional stores right away to say, hey, look, we can scale this pretty rapidly. And we put it out to 51 stores. Um, concurrently, we had five additional, you know, we had five work efforts going on. We had um, cyber was engaged this entire year. Um, throughout the pilot, we also upgraded to Agentry 5.1. The, um, throughout the February time frame, we installed the mobile device manager at the same time. Um, what's not listed on this sheet is when we, we knew we were deploying to 2,000 stores, we needed to ensure there would be um, no issues with um, how quickly the stores could, could get access, so we had some load balancer. Um, we had several servers brought up and load balancers put on so that we could ensure the, um, the access for everybody at the same time. Um, we put a plan into place to roll out the physical inventory, so the basic functionality, right away to 2,000 locations. And then we were doing a design, build, test, rollout of new functionality planned for a September uh, release, and that included things like um, creating stock transfers, receiving in, uh, receiving in goods and goods receipts, and then changing some of how we did our physical inventory so that we could go into blind um, physical inventories where they wouldn't know what the system expected them to have. Some of the successes that we experienced, we were, um, we, it was a very small project team. We had um, primarily one internal developer, one or two testers. Our, our project, our business team was um, three or four really good analysts um, who were on the ground. And then my consultant team was like three or four people. And we were just very engaged um, all along the way. We. Some of this, the opportunities for improvements or the, you know, the things that didn't go as well were, were very minor considering the scope of the project. There were some things we could have done identifying negative test cases. There were some um, things we could have documented better from a post-deployment bug plan. Um, but all in all, I think it was a tremendous success. Some of the benefits that we realized, um, so if you take a look at the graph there on the right, what we've got is the the magenta is what our pre-pilot monthly labor hours were. Phase one was the release of just the physical inventory changes after um, to, the, to the 2,000 stores. So we immediately saw a 50% reduction in the amount of labor hours. The, the last green column is how many was our labor hours after phase two, and so that's the blind inventory counting. It's the, um, the other inventory processing that we did, like goods receipts and, and stock transfers. And so we saw an inventory labor again reduced by half. Um, it tremendously reduced our inventory discrepancies, and it was fairly interesting. I don't have a graph on it, but it was a fairly interesting trend when we released the, prod, the, the changes at the end of September, we actually saw a spike the next month of our inventory discrepancies, and then um, 
we saw a decrease after that. So it was the corrective action that happened the, the first month, and then the, the trend line really decreased after that. Um, our partner locations, this is an optional um, application for them to use. So these are dealer partners that, that run our system, so this is something that they can use, but they don't have to use. Those that do use it have a definite improvement in the um, amount of inventory accuracy that they have. And just generally, our, um, our business users really enjoy, I mean, as much as you can enjoy taking inventory, the business, the, the retail team likes this project or this product. Uh, today, the scanners are used at 2,500 locations. Those are corporately owned stores and several hundred partners. We use the Motorola MC70, um, and we use that in a docked solution. So rather than using Wi-Fi or wireless, which would be a true mobile live project, we use it as a um, it, it scan. Um, we go through and scan everything, and then we dock it and upload our inventory. The, um, we find that that's really beneficial from a security perspective and connection consistency and a user experience. Um, we don't want to have to drop, you know, we don't want to worry about um, the Wi-Fi dropping right when they're transmitting their, their inventories. Um, additional functionality we've added, I've mentioned the blind inventory count stock transfer order creation, goods receipt, and just last month we upgraded to Cyclos 6. Um, we did that at the server level, and we're um, yesterday I think we rolled out our first clients, um, and it was a very seamless, took about 10 minutes um, per store to roll out the, the first version of the clients on, on 6.0, and that was in preparation of the new scanners that we're going to be getting, we're going to be going to a MC75A, which has a VGA screen. And so that's needed for the Cyclo 6 is compatible with those VGA screens. The, um, here are some of just some of the user comments that we've received, especially that first year. It was a, a really impressive um, rollout and it was something that whenever I go into a retail store, it's something I'm proud of saying I was a part of where I can say, yes, you know, I, I helped put that in, and I get always get good responses from our retail stores. Um, we were able to move from monthly inventories into weekly inventories, and that also increased our inventory accuracy. Um, and we've had very few production issues. Most are a result of the hardware and the scanner and the, and the cradle, um, or it's a user issue where they plug their cables into their computer or into a non-active USB port, so or a non-active uh, Ethernet port. So it's um, very easy training to, to resolve. Um, moving forward, some of the things on the horizon that we're going to be looking at are um, possibly going away from the Motorola scanners and and really utilizing some of the hardware that we have already in the retail stores, like our Android phones, maybe using a Bluetooth, Bluetooth scanner option that's attached to Android. Um, we, something I didn't talk about, but it's definitely on our roadmap, is to get to a point where we can track the serialized inventory. Cell, cell phones are serialized product. Today, that's not something that we track our inventory yet, although it is something we track our point of sale at, so we, um, we can do a better job of tracking our, our serialized inventory. Um, and then we're also looking at other cyclo initiatives, such as approval manager and maybe something from a ticketing standpoint. So that is my, my journey for cyclo. Um, I'm going to give it over to Brian, and he's going to uh, talk you through a demonstration. Thank you very much, Ashley. Appreciate that. Um, very interesting uh, deployment you guys have there. So um, there's some questions on can we actually see this demonstration of the software, and that's definitely what we'll do. Um, Smart Inventory Manager um, has some certain basic functionality built into it, and obviously we can expand the capabilities to meet specific business requirements. Um, but today we'll talk about uh, 
performing cycle counts, um, which is, of course, a core functionality there at T-Mobile, um, doing goods issues, um, stock transfers, I think, was you know, part of that second or third phase, and goods receipts. Um, so what I have here, let me go ahead and share my desktop. And uh, we'll take a look at up here. Um, my device. I've got a Motorola or Symbol device here on my on my desk. It's uh, the, I think the one that they're moving over to an MC75. It's running a little app on there that shows what's on my device on my laptop screen, and we're sharing that via WebEx. I'm going to zoom up a bit here. That's a little bit too big. Oops. And. Uh, as well as the Smart Inventory Manager application. Um, I've already logged in the application, um, and uh, I have here as a user uh, the ability to do uh, cycle counts. So this is the Inventory tab here at the bottom, uh, to the ability to perform issues. And I've got some issues here. We can um, download production orders, reservation order type orders, a whole, there's a whole slew of movement types. We support all the different movement types that you have within SAP. Um, so for goods issues, you've got you know the ability to issue to cost centers, projects, sales orders, assets, uh, networks, etc. Uh, transfer, so out of the box, uh, plant to plant, store, uh, storage location, storage location, with the warehouse management um, component, we could do uh, bin level transfers as well. Reversals. And uh, receipts. So, um, and again, the ability to to do purchase order receipts against a wide variety of different uh, types of orders. Um, just for demonstration purposes, for the sake of time, um, I've already kind of downloaded uh, some of the documents that uh, users will be performed against. So, in SAP, you can for uh, doing cycle counts, you can uh, download a physical inventory document uh, by tapping the download button. It would go back to SAP and uh, retrieve uh, a count list that has the, the parts, materials that you want to perform counts against. Um, and I've already kind of done that. You could also do what we call an ad hoc count. So you actually don't create, you would actually create your document uh, on the fly. Clicking the add button, you'd go ahead, uh, indicate where you're doing your count from, um, scan or enter in your material numbers, uh, and then go and send that, post that directly back to SAP. Um, so for this, uh, answer some of the questions that will come up. Uh, it's not RF Console. It's a, a product that was developed by Cyclo here. I think RF Console is a, a no longer supported solution with SAP. I'm not sure on that, but I think that was uh, something I was reading about. Something that uh, um, is built on a platform that uh, can do other applications, such as work order management, uh, uh, approval manager, et cetera. So the functionality here for uh, doing cycle counts, just so we get an idea of how an application works, um, I've got some documents here. I can um, scan a, a document number, and it will go ahead and select it. There we go. So I went and, and um, scanned uh, a sheet that says manifest that says here's your cycle counts that you need to perform. And then it took me to the list of parts uh, on that list that I need to count against. And we see that item number one already has a check next to it. That tells me that we've already done the count for this uh, list already. So started doing counts, we went to lunch, we'd come back, we already know what we counted, we don't have to count it again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and scan another uh, item on the shelf, let's say. And I've got my imager um, caught on. Scan the wrong one. Um, just so you can see that I'm actually scanning a barcode. Otherwise, if I just kind of use the linear scanner, you probably wouldn't see it. And I think we've got the, light, right, the right sheet here, but I'm not sure. There we go. So I scanned the barcode. Uh, it found the part number or the item on the shelf, and I can go ahead and take that count. I'm going to say there's 45 of those on the shelf. Pretty simple stuff. If there were none on the shelf, I'd, I'd tap the zero count button here, and that would indicate uh, that there is zero versus just skipping that count. Hit the finish button here at the bottom, and it takes me back to my list. I scan the next part, enter in that count. If everything is not barcoded, um, that's okay. I could just select the item on my list. So this, uh, let's say this 102-433, a uh, box of six by 60 screws. Go ahead and count those, and it takes me to the same screen we saw when we scanned the barcode. So again, I'm gonna enter in my count here. We'll say there's 20 of those, and enter in my count. These are blind counts out of the box. 
I don't know what should be on the on the shelf. We could definitely bring down the, the, the book quantity and display that to the user. Um, I think one of the questions came up, what keeps people from looking at this in SAP and kind of, of um, you know, copying what's in SAP. Um, we don't have to bring down and display the uh, the SAP account in on the device, and we don't. We can validate against that. So if they enter an account that's off by certain variance or tolerance limit, we could say, you know, that's that's off by that's off. Do you want to re-enter the count, or is that a correct count? Um, just to kind of give them the feel that they're not what we call fat fingering their count. Um, but I kind of figure, yeah, you could go into SAP, kind of look up that, and say, well, what does SAP say on there? Um, and I call those kind of things, you know, crimes of opportunity. It's yeah, you can always you can always circumvent nearly any any system and process you have in place. But uh, what we try to do is eliminate kind of easy stuff, if you will. Um, I'm working offline, so I'm not connected to SAP. Uh, so this is all going to store up like it, it does in the T-Mobile example. And uh, when I get back into coverage, um, I can put in the docking station and send those back to. SAP and have those posted. Uh, if I wasn't wireless coverage, it would work the same exact way, except as I perform those counts, send those back to SAP in the background. So um, I'm kind of in constantly doing updates back to SAP. If I fell out of coverage, uh, then I can uh, store it and store those counts up until I get back into coverage and uh, post those up when I get back into coverage. So the application actually kind of, uh, you set it up, am I, am I an typically online or am I offline? And if I'm online, typically, um, and I lose connection, uh, we can have it retry making that connection back to your network, and at that point, send it back up. Uh, if it can't make a connection, we have it uh, you know, wait for a specified period of time and then reconnect. Because um, what you find is, uh, you know, be like trying to talk on the phone for eight hours, you, you, you really affect battery life, and then add on top of that barcode scanning, et cetera, and that, uh, can dramatically affect your your battery life. So that was kind of my quick uh, example of our uh, inventory management system. Let's go back here and and uh, like I said, we we uh, hopefully get more discussions with customers that want to see uh, more uh, more capabilities of the system. Uh, and we can definitely do that for you as well. Okay, now we're going to open this up to uh, Q and A's, Melody. She should be coming on. Oops, sorry, I'm still on mute there. I Thanks do that all the time. for that demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> you just talked to yourself for a while, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so at this time, we're going to start the Q&A. Uh, we still are taking some questions, so if you have any last-minute questions, feel free to submit them in the Q&A box. Um, due to time constraints, we'll get to as many as we can. If we don't answer them today, we will have um, someone follow up with you with a response. So, um, Brian, right after your demonstration, we did get a few questions specifically about the demo, so I'm just going to start with those. Um, some people were wondering if there was um, approval capabilities or signature capabilities um, tied into Inventory Manager. Yes, so it's a that'd be a configuration that we have. Uh, we have actually other applications that are built on that same platform, the ability to have uh, signatures. Now, the way we do the updates back to uh, SAP is it's going to go through any kind of like approval process you might have set up as well. So if it's a different person, so I might do a goods receipt or a, I might do a, a purchase requisition on the mobile device, send that back, and then that needs to go to a second level manager for approval. And so the way we do the updates back to SAP is, is um, through the business layer so that uh, any processes or workflow you have established based on um, what someone might do in, in SAP GUI, um, it still still works. It's still there. So we're not uh, kind of dumping this into the database, and you have to kind of figure out what to do next. Um, so it works. Uses a standard uh, interface back to SAP. Um, the other question I saw in here, um, someone asked. I'm going to kind of circumvent the process here, Melody. I apologize, but um, a question on does it work in Mexico was another question on here that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So. 
when a user logs into the device, they're going to, when they log in, get their localized database, and we can uh, configure the, the only thing we really have to configure since they're getting the, the data information um, from their localized database is things like labels and buttons and things like that. So we've got some, some uh, the ability to easily translate those to not only meet specific language requirements, but even um, specific customer requirements. So um, you might um, want to, um, you know, change even at, even from a standard label to um, a localized language um, that's specific for your company, the way you guys typically talk, talk uh, within your own organization. Okay, thanks, Brian. Um, Ashley, we have a question here for you. Um, you said earlier in your presentation that um, you guys use MDM, so some people were curious as to how this helped with the, your implementation. Sure. Um, one of the things that allows you to do is to do a, a rolling implementation. So, um, for instance, where we just um, upgraded to 6.0, we didn't want to push down that to everybody. So we upgraded our servers to, we have a version of 6.0 sitting on the server and a version of 5.0 sitting on the server. As we're bringing on new devices, we can point them to the 6.0, and we can really phase out the client upgrade. So we can say, okay, we're just going to take this MDM group, and we set up an MDM group for each, uh, or we set up a, when a new unit gets deployed out to the retail stores, it gets assigned to an MDM group, and maybe there's 50. And we can say just those 50 units are getting the client upgrade. And so you don't have to push down everything to everybody. You can really phase it and roll it out very deliberately. And that's one of the ways that it helped with our rollout, in addition to being able to allow um, allow the configurer, right, the people who are setting up these individual units, they can set up each one um, before we send it to the retail store. And we use MDM for that. Okay, thanks, Ashley. Mm -hmm. Um, this question for Brian or Mary. Um, in Ashley's case, they use Motorola devices, so people were wondering if they are able to do inventory manager on iPhone or Android or BlackBerry devices. Brian or Mary? Yep. So absolutely. So you can um, run the application on a you know Android device, Android smartphones, tablets, uh, iPhones, iPads, uh, Windows Mobile, Windows laptop. Now there's a, a the question on what we always suggest is uh, what's the most usable device? W you know, how can pick the right device for the right use case? So walking around with a tablet, trying to do a scan, you know, climbing up on a ladder to scan items on the fourth shelf, you know, you probably want something the most, you know, something you can hold in one hand, so you can hold the ladder with the other hand, kind of that situation. So pick the right device that's gonna that that's gonna work for you is, is kind of our suggestion. Okay, thanks. Um, Ashley, you had mentioned this a little bit before, but could you maybe go into a little detail of kind of who the people were and how many um, were involved in your implementation team? I know you had your team and you were working with cyber and then psycho people, so could you yeah. kind of give us a little more overview on that? Yeah. Um, I have to go back to my, again, go to my Wayback Machine. Um, but we had basically one project manager on the T-Mobile side, and we had a peer on the cyber side to help do the vendor management. Um, and on cyber, it was really one developer and one analyst, and then I had a developer and analyst on my team. Um, our test team was, you know, maybe two or three people on the T-Mobile side, but um, that was mostly contract work. You know, we'd have one lead and then a couple of, of junior folks. Um, our application support team, it's a, it's a group that manages other applications. So we had one primary person on the app support team, and today, um, you know, that, that team manages the, the whole of the application from a production standpoint. And there's maybe three or four people total, but honestly, it's probably 10% of their total work. It's very, very low overhead um, from a production standpoint. So the project team, I would say it would be, and then the business folks, so maybe maybe 20, 25 people. But when you look at the large corporate projects, um, you know, I've been on like 300 or 500 people projects before, and this was nowhere close to that kind of scale. Um, but it, the benefit that it gained was, was very high. Okay, thanks.
Thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, could you answer this? We got in a question about if you are able to take a photo of something and attach it to the SAP document. Yeah, and that's actually one of the reasons why I turn on the, the, the camera on the device. I don't know if you saw the, the image of the barcode when I took the when I scanned it instead of using the linear scanner. Um, so you can absolutely uh, take a photo and attach that to any type of document, whether it's a work order or, or a, um, a part or anything else like that, and then send that back to SAP and, and drop that in the appropriate um, space within SAP so you can retrieve that, whether that's a, an attached uh, document or um, a field just in the database. Okay, thank you. Um, Brian, probably another question for you. Yep. Uh, how do you prevent staff from looking on a desktop to see the balances and enter them into the mobile device? And maybe, Ashley, if you wanted to add in on this too as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Ashley, if there's any, any practical experience you had, but like I said, you you know, um, if you give users access to everything, you, you you're probably not, and that was kind of my yeah. comment of a crime of opportunity, saying, well, if you make it inconvenient for someone, they're not going to do it. If you make it easy for them to cheat, then they stay sign that, that honest people cheat. <laughs> yeah, and so go ahead. I mean, the way we did it was um, we, just, we didn't expose it onto the mobile device, which is, mm -hmm. which is one thing, and then we do our reconciliation on the device before we send it back to SAP. So... Um, we send down the, the counts to the device, but they're kind of hidden in the background. And then when the user hits reconcile, it goes and does reconciliation of the counts that we just did against the counts that the device is holding in the background. And then says, go and count these other these, these units again because you have you have inventory discrepancies. And then they go and they can count them again. And then once they've counted them again, they retransmit. And you can absolutely go and check your inventory on your desktop. It's we just when you're in the inventory, it's not an easy thing to go and all right, I'm in the in the front of the store. I'm going to go back and check how many of these I should really have. Um, and it's just something we discourage from a process standpoint. We need them to be able to see what their inventories are when they're selling phones, but not when they're doing inventories. And so there's a fine line and a balance that we had to take. And I guess if it is a big issue, you can obviously with an SAP security just eliminate yeah. those and screens. Yeah, and we, and we it. actually tried that um, initially. We said yeah, nothing, and it caused other problems. So right. we exactly we just put process in place. Okay, thanks. Um, I think we have time for just one more question. Um, and anyone, I guess, feel free to add in your perspective, but how would this be beneficial in a standard warehouse environment that already operates with a wireless um, scanner? So well, maybe I'll, not as much in the retail, but more in a warehouse? Yeah, so uh, you can expand the solution out. I mean, we were talking about working with standard materials management and SAP, but you can expand the capabilities out for warehouse management functionality. So, um, you know, bin capabilities and, and, yeah. and batch and lot stock and or batch and lot management and things like that. So if you already have the symbols and you know the the, the hardware and the infra then the wireless infrastructure in place, I mean that's one less cost that you have to incur to roll out this application. Um, kind of the benefit of our solution is that you know here's a we actually this is one product in a whole suite of products that integrate back to SAP. So you've got you know and she talks about having this team that has, that, you know, this person that supports this application. Well, it's not a, if you go to, uh, you know, you want people to do EAM, like work order management, you don't need a different skill set to be able to manage this application. Um, you know, so with warehouse management, if you already have the costs, hardware costs taken care of, um, this can run on probably on those same devices. Yeah, and I actually equate what we do in retail uh, from an inventory perspective much more like a warehouse would manage their inventory, right? Um, this isn't necessarily a retail-specific inventory management tool. We had to configure some things, especially because we were retail, but it, it would be a seamless integration into a, a warehouse environment because you could, it, it does link directly back to SAP and it does, you know, it, those, those basic inventory functions are really the, you know, inventory counts and when you do physical inventory documents in SAP, it's a physical inventory document for a plant, and I'm putting plant in quotation marks, because 
for T-Mobile, our plants are our stores. And so it would just, it would be a, a very, um, it's a one-to-one -one in, my, in my mind. All right, thank you both for answering that last one. Um, unfortunately, that is all the time, though, that we do have for our Q&A session. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining today's webcast, and a big thank you to you, Ashley, for sharing uh, T-Mobile's story. Please uh, feel free to reach out to our presenters if you have any further questions. And again, if we didn't get to your questions today, we will try and have someone follow up with you about your inquiry. If you are interested in receiving daily updates about Cyclo news and product information, you can check us out online. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And that's all the time we have today, everyone. Thanks so much, and have a great day.